today we're going to be replacing the motherboard on a Sony PlayStation 4. The motherboard on this unit has to be replaced with the optical drive board, but our replacement did come with a replacement optical drive, so we'll be just be switching out the entire unit. To get started, we will need to remove the four T9 inverted torques or security torques screws on the rear of the system, two underneath the warranty stickers, one on the top and one on the bottom, and one on each end underneath the other stickers. This one has had the warranty stickers removed as someone else has previously attempted a repair. The T9 security Torx bit tool is actually a standard Torx bit with a hole in the center of it as you can see in the picture here. That small hole is what makes it a security Torx bit. And we're going to use this to disassemble all these screws or take all these screws out. Now that we have this out, we need to grasp the casing of the PS4 underneath the rear edges on the, the back rear side and you can lift upwards and the entire case will rock forwards. It may take a little bit of a uh, little bit of time to do so, but for the most part, it should be fairly simple to get it off. The next step is going to be to get the power supply out. This right here is your optical drive, which we will be taking out later on. Um, but the power supply does have to come out first and foremost. Um, you do have all these screws in the optical drive, which are, do use the T9 Torx with the exception of one Phillips head. But again, we do have to take the power supply out first, which it does have two standard Phillips head screws, and it has three of the T9 security Torx bits. Once you do get all of these screws loosened, then you can grasp each side of the power supply. Um, at this point, you may want to put an anti-static wristband on in order to, to prevent damaging any of the electronic components. And be cautious when you do grasp the side of the power supply because you do have a cable that will need to be disconnected. So do not pull too hard when you do this. and with a little bit of wiggling you should get it loose. Now this cable here is, needs to be disconnected from the motherboard which you can just pull upwards to get that disconnected. Alright next we need to take the optical drive connection cable off which just press down on the clip and pull out and the same on the optical drive itself press down and pull out. Alright, we're going to take off the wireless antenna next. And the easiest way to do it is to just grab your little spudger and put it right underneath the edge of that wireless antenna and twist it will pop right up. And then you can move it up and out of the way. You may have to remove that power cable for the optical drive to do so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the unit over in order to get to the opposite side. This access panel just slides to the left and then comes off. It was designed like this in order to give you easy access to the hard drive, which you can remove and put in an alternate system should you have problems. You're now going to use your T9 Torx bit to loosen the two screws on the other cover.
and then you can grasp that from the rear of just like you did with the top and you you should be able to lift it right up and have it come off all right. once we get to this point we're going to need to remove all of the T9 Torx bits or Torx screws in the PlayStation 4 There are also two Phillips head screws holding the heat sink onto the CPU that will have to be removed and the fan connector which we will go ahead and remove by inserting a spudger and twisting. Now when you get ready to remove this, the only thing you need to do is lift upwards on the front and it should come loose and you can set that metal cover out of the way. The thermal pads on the memory chips, you do need to be careful and make sure that they are on the metal plate. The, uh, the thermal pads prevent those memory chips from overheating and can cause a premature failure if you do not put it back on the metal plate. So we're just going to scrape this off of here very lightly and it doesn't look like it's in great condition so we'll see about finding a replacement for that. We're going to rock the motherboard upwards and pull it out of the way. Be sure to check your thermal pads on this side of the, the motherboard as well. All of those memory chips do need those thermal pads. Now if you'll notice we do have some thermal paste on the heatsink from the motherboard from the processor chip. That will need to be cleaned off. You can use a solution called Arctic Clean or you can just use a high percentage alcohol, preferably wipe in this direction clear that all right off and there we go now let's find our replacement motherboard now I did have an issue with this board um, we're going to go ahead and put it back in in the exact opposite di direction making sure that all the thermal pads are in the correct places um, I just applied them directly to the motherboard instead of placing them on the metal plate. Um, I did have an issue with a capacitor on this board that looked like it could have been damaged, um, so I grabbed my meter and tested it, but everything tested good. So now we're going to slide this board in and lay it down in place. Make sure you do apply new thermal paste to the processor chip on the new board a pea size drop in the center of the chip should be plenty. Alrighty, and once we get the board installed securely, we can put the metal plate back on the top.
do not forget to plug your fan in and we can just reassemble the PS4 motherboard on the top half. Be sure that you do not put your screws back in the two holes for the top cover. Alright, and to remove the optical drive or Blu-ray drive, we'll need to take out the T5 or T9 Torx screws and the Phillips head screw on the front. and then you can put the new device in and just screw it right on down be sure to route the power cable back in the original location and before you do plug this power connector in make sure that you run your wireless wire underneath of it. These connectors just slide back in place. There's, you don't have to push on the connector or anything. And again make sure that your wire was inserted before you put the power for the Blu-ray drive back in. And then we can go and reroute this wire through the original groove. and then grab some small pliers to position it and snap it back into place so the only thing left to get this back up and running is going to be to put the power supply back in it remember to plug your power connector into the motherboard and then you can take your power supply and insert it back in place and press firmly you will have to press firmly on the left hand side to get it to snap into place go ahead and put your screws back in and then you can put that bottom cover on replace the top cover slide your hard drive back in place and snap the top cover on at this point you should be all set to go after you put your four screws in thank you for watching